Becky just bought a rollaway nesting box. Becky's really excited to get it installed. So we are going to retrofit one of our existing coops to see just kind of how it works and if there's any tweaks we need to make and stuff like that. So, <laughs> and then we can put the chickens back in. <laughs> We're gonna fit. Yeah. yeah. Perfect dimension. Okay, it's not gonna go in like that. You're gonna have to kind of. Look at this. There's a really neat. The coops that we have are great with the exception of one thing. They have been difficult to clean and once we put in the rollaway nesting box it's going to make it even harder to clean. So I asked Cam to make an access door on the side to make it easier for me. Utilize this so it kind of matches but it'll just be separated with like a small like frame. Probably just a piece of plywood. I'll just cut this and in half. Frame and frame them up. Yeah, so, so it'll still look like, you know. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. Or do you not want that? No, that sounds great. Is that really bad? No, great. Are you going to hinge up or hinge down? I'm going to do whatever you tell me, as you wish. <laughs> so if you hinge up, that's not going to work because I need to get in there. Unless you have like a hook up here that you can hook it to. Your... Just make a hook or hinge it down, whatever. This, is, uh, this, this spacer is needed so that the hinge won't get caught up on this because it's sticking out. So once we get the hinge installed, you'll see what I mean. So just a quick test to make sure it works. We'll do that. I'll, I'll go in here actually. Ah, shoot. You shouldn't do that on camera. <laughs> So yeah, so these are just an accident waiting to happen, so I'll, yeah. I'll, fix, I'll fix that. Or, or from here. Yeah. Some wooden latch up here that kind of holds something, that down. Something right there. So that yeah. It doesn't flap up when the kids aren't. This is, this is the, the bottom part of that thing. I just need to go find another piece of wood that's going to be the actual, like, turning piece. Oh, okay. I, I think I understand. Yeah, that's good. See, now I'll get another piece, probably like plywood, that's, you know, six inches long, and that'll anchor here, and then that'll be what you flip up, kind of the latch. Okay. So, I just need... Okay. Good. Put it down. This, this stuff might eventually break and I'll have to bolster that, but until then. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Cam finished this wonderful project. No, it's not completely finished, but he's going to tell you about it because this is not my thing at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's not her thing, but she really enjoys the fruits of the labor here, yeah. of my labor. No, don't. We took out the existing door and basically slid this in it fit in very well eggs will roll here like here's some kind of decoy eggs so we'll gather them here won't have to mess with anything inside these corners where i need to put some mesh to just secure 
everything again, like like you, what you see up here. We decided to do mesh down there because we didn't want them to lay eggs in these little corners. Yeah, it's kind of a little corner now, so if it's if light lets in, they're going to be less likely to go there as a dark spot because it's not dark. We just finished the final touch on this modified coop. Since there's no access door back there, Becky wanted a new door to clean the coop. So that's kind of what this is. None of the other coops really have this yet. Uh, so I just fashioned some hinges here. I still have a little bit of work to do, but basically you can access it from the side, put a shovel in here, scoop all the crap out, and then close it back up. <laughs> Even though it's technically still winter, we will be planting in just a couple of weeks. Usually the first thing that I'm planting is my peas and my leafy greens. So I'm prepping three beds for those things. And we had to clear out some weeds that took hold because I had my quick hoops here and I couldn't get to any of these areas. Another thing that we did was somebody mentioned on a previous video when I was chopping back my asparagus that they burn their asparagus and I have actually done that in the past but I had completely forgotten about it and I thought it was a really good idea. It had just rained and so we had really good conditions to do it because there was no chance of it spreading every anywhere. Burning asparagus helps to reduce pests like the asparagus beetle and pathogens as well. The best part about seed starting is getting to put your hands in the dirt <laughs> and play. <laughs> um, a couple videos ago I was doing some seed starting and I had a lot of people ask me about what I use so I'm just going to answer that quickly here. These are wood trays that Cam built. We use the plans in Elliot Coleman's book. It's called The New Organic Grower. It's all lined out on there. And then this is my own doing. I use some capillary matting that goes on the bottom of these and I make it extra long. This is what it looks like when it's new, nice and white. I do reuse these. You can just wash them with really hot water and they're good to use, keep reusing every year. I make it fit the tray with a little bit extra and then this hangs into uh, a metal baking sheet and I don't have any out here right now but I'll show it in a minute. I just line both of these up and then this fabric goes into the water in the baking sheet and the baking sheet is where I refill the water. I'll give you a visual here on the onions. So these two trays, the wicking fabric goes down into the water and that's how it wicks it up. And then underneath here, this is an actual like cookie sheet baking tray. It's the half sheet size. And then sometimes I do use the quarter sheet size, like over here. And I just make do with what I have on this. I was prepping for seed starting yesterday. I didn't make it too far. So I have more going on today. The kids helped me to get some trays going and some soil blocks done. And we also emptied out some of this table over here. And we planted cilantro, we planted lettuce. And I'm hoping to plant out my kale today. But that is more of like wishful thinking. I really hope it happens. But if it doesn't, we'll just push it out a couple days because it's supposed to rain pretty hard tomorrow and the next day. So I won't be able to plant on those days. 
Um, but I do have some lettuce and, and cabbage that I'm doing today and I'm gonna be planting some flowers in the soil blocks. And the last thing is tomatoes. I'm doing an early set of those to plant in my tunnel. One of the things that I have learned over the years that I have been gardening is that it is easy to plant too much. And I didn't really learn that until we moved to this property and we had a lot of space. We used to have a smaller garden. We lived in the suburbs and it wasn't really possible to plant too much of something because we were so limited. But once we had the bigger garden, I started planting a lot of one thing, like a lot of lettuce. And you run into a problem with that because lettuce doesn't preserve very well. So for the crops that do not preserve easily, I do a lot of succession planting. So for lettuce, I'm planting one batch every three weeks or so so that we can have a constant supply of lettuce and for the cabbage i am actually doing the same thing because you can only eat so much sauerkraut and kimchi so i'm doing some succession planting of those as well one of the things we noticed when we installed the new egg thing roll away box is that it was a lot bigger than the nesting boxes that we had in there and so it took away a lot of the chickens roosting space so something we are considering doing is adding making like the coop area <laughs> making the coop area a little bit bigger so let me flip this around we'll show you it should be fairly easy to add basically expand their coop up here another section between these studs yeah. to give them some more room to roost because they're kind of crowded right now so it's like two more feet right two more, yeah well yeah essentially two more feet worth which then they'll give them plenty of room and then it doesn't take away any of where they you know where they forage on the ground so <laughs> The only negative of that that Cameron is worried about is it's going to add extra weight to these yeah. coops. It'll add a little bit of weight, but I don't think it's going to be much. So maybe 10 pounds of wood kind of thing. This is like our experimental coop. We've been happy with the design so far, but you know, you can always make adjustments and make it a little better as you go along. So that's what we're doing right now. It's fun. Because <laughs> I don't have enough projects to do, so no, it's fine. Yeah. This is a, these are good ones. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so cool.